I have attracted someone in my life who is in relationship. I would like to understand why. At the same time, I become more aware of the seeking for love energy in my health. Heart. I spend time with it, going through it. Feel she wants to heal and avoid the difficulty of her actual relation with which may end. Thanks a lot for what sharing here. Hey Jordan. So when we forget ourselves that who we are is this love, is this presence, is what's happening right now, this consciousness which is all things and no thing, and this presence, when we forget that, what we do is we begin to fixate on pleasure and pain. And we begin to believe that, um, that getting something in pleasure will bring you back to wholeness because you remember wholeness you know it from how out throughout your life there's a sense of it like the, you can only seek for something if you know vaguely what you're seeking for like if we try to imagine something that we don't know exists it's impossible to seek for it so in part there's a knowing of this wholeness and then what you do is you project that on pleasure you will um, get home but it's not conscious. It's like this energy of agitation that you can't quite rest. And then when your heart aches, so when you get your heart hurt, and so when you go into pain, you believe that that's what the problem is, that you're in pain, and that's what's keeping you away from wholeness. Again, it's not conscious that you're thinking it's keeping you away from wholeness. It's like an underlying unconscious agitation so therefore you, you then get into this paradigm and it starts quite early on where you're constantly trying to maintain pleasure and avoid pain. So it's this constant seeking for pleasure and avoiding pain. And how is it that we experience pleasure? We experience pleasure predominantly through us, through our chakra system. Um, so obviously you can feel pleasure from touch of the body and from taste, but predominantly that's interpreted through our chakra system. So the fact that you've identified the pain comes in your heart currently, um, the, the, you know that love is connected to the heart chakra. So you, so you know that part of the aching and the problem in the relationship is there's something in your heart chakra energy that is being activated and either sent into lots of pleasure or lots of pain. So let's look at what the heart chakra is. So the heart chakra is feeling loved, feeling part of a group, feeling like you're part of something, feeling valued, feeling like you have something to give, that you're worthy, that you're lovable. That's on the positive. And then on the negative, it's feeling abandoned, feeling alone, feeling that you're not worthy, feeling that you're unlovable, feeling that um, you'll be chucked out from the group, not good enough. And I'm sure there's more words I could describe it as. Um, and then it creates certain patterns. So you can have then an excessive response to that. So when you feel unloved or you feel not good enough, then you can have an excessive response that, that puts you into like very rapid energy of trying to feel loved, trying to feel appreciated, trying to feel like you fit in. So you could see that manifest in personalities with like love addictions, but always trying to get validation from everybody. Um, and they're always trying to avoid any possible negativities negativity. They never want to hear anything negative about themselves. So love addictions, always trying to get love from people, always trying to be popular, be successful, be appreciated, live up to appearances. And then when it goes into depleted, so that could be excessive energy, depleted is um, somebody that puts themselves into situations where they're not valued where they're put down, where they're not recognized 
for their beauty, uh, where they don't think they're worthy to, to feel that, where they constantly feel like they're being criticized or judged or put down or scrutinized. So those two, two different scenarios. So what you could also have in the deficient area is putting yourself in relationships where the other doesn't love you. Then if we go back to um, the actual what it is you want, what it is you want is this moment right here. So that seeking for the lady, for the love, for the appreciation is actually, you just want to come home. And, and having her in your life is simply a pleasure or a pain. And it's a beautiful pleasure and pain. But what you truly deeply want is to know yourself as this non-divided reality, which is beyond the personal structure and beyond the chakra system and the pleasure pain senses. It's this energetic shift from being singular to being everything. And that comes from recognizing that that which is experiencing this life, that which is experiencing the chakras, the personality structure, is actually everything. It isn't behind, it isn't locked inside the body, it is in everything that's appearing. And so um, that's that. And then I want to also going on to the relationship. Um, it's all down to you, to what you do. But I would say one of the most fundamental um, qualities in a relationship is trust. I, n I never knew this as a younger person. I never realized it was possible to really trust somebody. And I never realized how important that was in the relationship, in an intimate relationship, is trust. If you form a relationship with someone where they're cheating on their partner, no matter what they do in the future, no matter how many times they tell you they won't do it to you, you will never ever fully be able to trust them. And that's nothing to do with non-duality. This is a human dynamic. And you can't release enough karma to be able to trust them. And trust is the most important thing in the relationship from my perspective, but from many people's perspective. My parents always used to tell that to me, always heard people saying it, and I never really listened. But, and it's not that if you release your calm or if you release energy in your chakra system that you'll get over it and you'll one day trust them. When somebody has broken trust and you've witnessed them breaking trust, you can't erase that out of your memory. And that's a massive breaking on trust, watching them cheat. You're, it will mean that you'll, if you persist with the relationship, you'll have conflict because even though you can't, maybe can't admit it consciously, it will always be an issue for you. It will come up in arguments again and again. Trust is so important. And I'm not talking about forgiveness. I'm talking about trust. It's, and it's really important to be trustworthy to people. It's a really important quality. I used to, I never really valued the importance of it because I got into non-duality. I thought if I released my karma connected to trust, if I forgave enough or if, it, if I got over the, the thought that I needed trust, then it wasn't important in relationships. And then as I got older, I began to realize it is actually really important in relationships not for a spiritual reason, not as something that you've got to get over spiritually, but because these, this is someone that you're going to share your life with, you're going to share all your money with, you need to be able to trust them. Like you're going to share everything with them, your money, your intimacy, your friendships. Thank you. I do not feel I will be able to trust her in the future. Yeah, so what's the point? Like it's down to you, Jordan, what you do, but... The more that you invest time with her, the more that you'll find it harder to move away from her. The more intimate you come with her. Because we, we're like that, we bond with people. And then after you spend a long period of time with them, it's difficult to um, leave that bond for a lot of people. But it's down to you and you're, you're, you've got to live out your karma. And if your karma is to live that out, I had to live out many relationships where I didn't trust the person. 
and um, for good reasons, like I'd witnessed them doing things that were untrustworthy. And then I thought it was my issue as a woman and I've got to release this distrust of men and get over it. And to an extent that was true, that's why they kept appearing in my life to an extent. But there was also, there is another layer level where you meet someone and you know you can trust them energetically. But maybe you've got to be ready to meet someone that you really know you can trust. Because in a way, when you really fully acknowledge you can trust them, then it maybe brings up this commitment thing as well. When you can't trust someone, it's like you're not fully committed to the relationship. You're pulling yourself back. So when you trust someone, it's also about like totally merging with that person as well, like really fully committing to the relationship. Not holding anything back, like totally falling into it. That's what everyone actually wants in relationship because in a way, the male-female relationships reflects non-duality. So you could say that presence is the feminine, so the I am-ness is the feminine and the masculine is the consciousness. Or you could say the nothing, which is consciousness to me, is um, the masculine and the everything, life, the amnes, the presence, is everything and that's the feminine. And it's in these two coming together that this life is created. So in the masculine and the feminine coming together like the yin and yang sign, you can't have one without the other. And it's also in life when the masculine and feminine come together and totally merge into each other. But that takes absolute trust because it's like waking up, it's falling into this bliss, this love, this not knowing, this mystery. Beautiful.